What's good, YouTube? It's your boy Andre King coming at you today, and I'm super, super thrilled today because not only is it payday, but it's actually time to submit our final deliverable. If you've been following me, then you know that throughout the entire month of September, we've been busy not only planning, designing, and deploying Palo Alto firewalls inside of AWS, but getting into the nitty gritty and actually learning a little bit about some of the enhancements that Palo Alto offers so that we can meet each of these contract deliverables that you see here. And it wasn't easy, but we finally come to that final deliverable, which we need to submit a final report so that we can receive that money. So as you can see here, I've gone ahead and done the hard work and basically produce the documentation uh, for the contract. Starting up top, of course, for a final report, you do want to put the company's logo if you have one there, just to make it look a little bit polished. And then just a simple title here. And because we do have a contract number, it's good to just go ahead and put that on the title page as well. And the report prepared by myself, Andre King, um, representing Network Your Future on the 29th of September. So we squeezed it in by one day. Of course, we needed to get this in by the 30th. And then moving on to the table of contents, each of these chapters again representing and we'll be discussing um, each of those contract deliverables that was stipulated in the contract. So today uh, it's not all about going over the minutia and uh, the fine point of the detail. I'll definitely drop this down below a uh, link there for you to take a look, download this if you want to use it as a template or just to go through it on your own and have it for it either now or any time in the future, would definitely love to have that. And feel free to provide feedback. But today, won't take up too much of your time. Really just want to go through and breeze through and show some of the sections of our final report. So we start off with an executive summary. Again, just highlighting not only what our intent was with this proof of concept uh, between top flight security of the world and network your future, but also taking it in and leading into what the rest of the report contains. So high level summary of Palo Alto's platform, what it can provide, and then of course what our beliefs are right here in the last sentence as we delve into each of those deliverables. So for the deployment and configuration, each of these sections, we start off with a few sentences that kind of provide a high level summary of what that deliverable was all about and how it really applies to this proof of concept as well as the real world because that's what it's all about is an organization wanting to know how can this software, this technology, this hardware, this appliance, et cetera, et cetera, how will it meet the needs of my organization and my customers and help deliver um, that satisfaction and, and ultimately add value to the organization. So we started off by basically providing an overview of what we did inside of AWS, which of course was to manually deploy a single VPC we, of course, needed to do all of the subcomponents, the route tables, the subnets, the security groups, deploy the Internet gateway, et cetera. So we just highlighted uh, each of those EC2 details. We didn't put the AMI number, but we did speak to the instant size that we use for this POC. And we had to point out that we took advantage of Palo Alto's bundle, too, so that we could get all of those subscriptions such as wildfire, global protect, advanced URL filtering that weren't available with the bundle one. Uh, we kept costs down instead of purchasing a, a bring your own license where we would have had to go to the vendor or the VAR. And so that's an easy way to just spin up an EC2 instance for a few hours and do what you need to do. And of course, we also then went on to discuss the identity access management and security groups there. Um, Network interfaces, we went ahead and added an object here. If we double click, if you recall from one of the early videos in this series, we definitely built this together. That was the sped up video. And this is that Visio drawing that very simple, but it highlights each of the uh, or outlines, the subnets that we have for this environment, all 10 of those along with that spare subnet. And if we zoom in the CIDR for the entire VPC, and the management inside and outside interface. So this could be used as a point of reference um, for anyone there. All right. 
So for traffic filtering, this one will keep it short and simple. Um, for the entire proof of concept, for the most part, we had our security policy open wide to the world. We tailored that defense in depth. We used the security groups to further um, scope what could get all the way to the EC2 instance, made a rule or we modified the rule to deny SSH. We saw from our test host that those um, requests were actually denied. We, of course, needed an inbound and an outbound NAT policy. The inbound was we needed those clients that obtained a private IP address to be able to access resources inside of our cloud. And of course, outbound for that test Linux instance to reach resources out um, on the internet. So pretty simple there. And then moving now to threat prevention, if you recall, um, we had the different URL categories once we configured URL filtering and added it to our security policy, then it was going to enforce um, that list of those different categories, permit, block, or alert. And we saw that by default, weapons and adult um, websites that were deemed that were denied or blocked. And so we did simple curl attempts from that test Linux instance, and we saw both on the firewall itself as well as on the Linux instance, those blocks. And so these are just simple screenshots here that'll show the customer um, proof of that. The VPN was pretty sweet. It was uh, pretty good. It took a while to get everything configured there. As you recall, we could have went hours explaining Palo Alto's Global Protect solution and the various, just numerous um, different configurations that you can do to do posture checking on the host side to make sure that so many registry checks can be done before authenticating a resource or host onto the network. But we kept it simple. We used the same um, public IP address for that outside interface for both the portal where users can go authenticate, download the software if they don't have that VPN client and get that configuration there. And of course the gateway, which is represents the head end where those client sessions will terminate and of course get their IP address from the scope or the pool that's configured there so that ultimately it can look like they're a part of the network. So we learned a lot in that video there and again that was a pretty sweet section. Logging and monitoring, we didn't look at this too much. We didn't configure any Splunk or any external type of uh, seam or logging aggregate its uh, destination to forward things such as syslog traffic to. So natively EC2 instances do have uh, some basic logging that they do for all of those EC2 resources. You can see some details here about CloudWatch and what's provided there um, as well as some data storage. So this one here, uh, just some pretty basic stuff. And then moving on to performance metrics, likewise, uh, we because this is just the Palo Alto firewall itself, and we spun up that basic Linux host. It's not real production network to basically have thousands of sessions and requests, traffic coming in and out to using various protocols, ports, uh, destinations, uh, applications, and things like that. So it was really hard to fake the funk, but we just put down um, how we would gather those metrics in case we used uh, iperf or iperf3 to obtain that. So this will serve as just some information on how we would handle that scenario in case you wanted to give it a read and take some time there. Now for the cost analysis and that breakdown, uh, that's uh, very important. That's typically what the client really wants or that's what they're after to know what their op operational costs, capital expenditures will be up front, year to year, month to month. Uh, so for this, AWS has a pretty handy tool. Uh, basically, navigate to this URL, calculator.aws. I already have it filled out basically to get those um, values that I needed to input there. Uh, but you select the region, again, anywhere around the world and east or west if this was a gov cloud. But for us, we deployed our POC in the US East region what type of operating system and for Palo Alto, put Linux. And then you need to start inputting uh, the parameters. So we had an M5 large, two virtual CPUs, um, up to 10 gig network performance. 
And then this is the one of the most important sections. So if it's on demand, that's when you can spin it up, spin it down, but you pay those hourly costs. But if you were to leave it on a device like a firewall in production, that's pretty much on 24 hours a day, unless it needs to get software upgrades and be rebooted, then you can really save by taking advantage of one of these savings plans. And this is where you pay more money up front to get over the t length of time um, a significant cost savings. So when we go back to that chart, that's where you'll see the one and three year options. You see this figure changing and that's how we got that price. Um, the, the additional details such as the storage, the e EBS volume, which we had 60 GB on our POC, our Palo Alto device there. This is the, if you expand show calculations, this is the details and the amount there. So just multiply this by 12 to get that amount. Uh, inbound from the internet is free, but outbound any cost that needs to go across is gonna be nine cents a gigabyte. So this again is just 10 gigabytes a day for a value of 300. Um, without any hard coded traffic from a client, you just put something that seems normal. And likewise, the monthly cost would be 27 times 12 to give us the value there. Elastic IPs, AWS actually is going towards, they used to give you the first five EIPs for free, but now they're making you pay basically, what's it, half a cent, 0 0.005 for every Elastic IP address. So we calculated that as well. And then, of course, if you come down here, you could do the math depending on which one of those EC2s you have selected up top. This we we if we scroll up, we'll see on demand is still selected. So that's that's why that value is there. Uh, but again, going back to the table, the only column that we didn't talk about is the Palo Alto licensing. And we got a consistent number there. And from the video that we did when we were launching the EC2 instance, we saw that the bundle two instance, and if you go to the Palo Alto before we accepted the subscription, this is where we get that value, um, six cents, um, the difference between the EC2 cost and the license. That's how we find it out. Do the math times 24 times 365, and that's what we come up with as opposed to going to either Palo Alto or a value added reseller of R to purchase a license directly from them. And that's where that BYOL or bring your own license choice or option would have come into play. Um, so again, a great section to provide. And this is normally when you're sitting with the client, this is really what they're going to want to speak in depth about. Um, in addition to um, understanding kind of any problems that were experienced along the way. But our final deliverable bullet that they asked for was our recommendation. So this section here, we just provided five recommendations. And because we only have one firewall, some of these such as auto scaling or integrating the AWS gateway load balancer to seamlessly scale out or deploy additional firewalls can actually do it across zones so that you can spin up different Palo Alto firewalls pretty much seamlessly and have it inspect that traffic. Um, these are our recommendations and that's pretty much it. Besides what I like to do uh, for any report or client is to add an acronym section. So any acronyms that we see here, just to spell them out um, to let the client know what those meant. And we may add a table two for some maybe definitions or something like that for any term that seems so they can prevent them from having to go look it up. But that's pretty much it. Our final report is signed, sealed, and we're getting ready to to email it off and get delivered and of course get that moolah get paid it's time to get paid so i want to thank each and every one of you out there who rocked in here with me today as well as the entire month of september because i had a blast actually demonstrating and showing off those capabilities of palo alto um, lovely product uh, lovely solutions that they offer and definitely looking to do more content on palo alto and showing uh, some more uh, functionalities that they provide but this was great if you enjoyed it definitely click that like button and comment down below if there's anything any other topic non palo related just and within the cloud within networking security that you think would be a great topic to make a mini series about four to six videos i know we went almost to eight or nine videos with this series but just 
just looking forward to really growing our community here with Network Your Future and just continuing to uh, share the knowledge that I have. But let me go ahead and sign off here. And like I said, thank each and every one of you out there for rocking here with me today. So until next time, stay safe, take care of yourselves. Peace.